What's up everybody? So today's video, we're gonna be working on the bruised banana again. And what we're gonna be doing in today's video is doing a valve adjustment. So it's pretty simple in these cars. Uh, I'm gonna walk through what I'm doing on the car. So we got some special tools, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get that done in today's video. And let me flip this camera around. I'll show you what we're gonna do and let's get started. So before we open the hood, I'm gonna show you these tools. So there's two special tools which check the description and there'll be links in the description for these tools of where I bought them. They're pretty cheap, honestly, but it's gonna make our lives a hell of a lot easier. So this is the one tool and it's a valve adjustment tool and they're calling it jam nut valve adjustment tool. And I think this thing was like, don't quote me, but it was pretty cheap, it was under 20 bucks. And it just, it has like this 10 mil head socket on it and it has a flat screwdriver built into it. And you put it on, it's got a wrench built in, and it allows you to hold the valve in place and tighten the jam nut. So that, which we'll show you, is going to be very helpful. The other thing we're going to use is, of course, feeler gauges. So we're going to need um, these to check the valve clearances once we get everything ready to go. So those two together, along with just regular common tools of sorts, is going to be what we're going to use. Let's pop the hood. I'll show you what we got to change or what we gotta do in order to get this done. So, let me just get this hood prop here. Okay, so we're gonna have to take the valve cover off, of course. So we're gonna disconnect everything. We gotta take all these coil packs out and disconnect the wiring for the coil packs. Pretty simple, 10 mil head bolts. Squeeze this clip over here, take those off. Um, also have to disconnect the PCB valve, so we're gonna squeeze this, take this hose off. Same thing with this one that goes to the air um, intake. And we're gonna have to remove this one sensor, um, I believe. I might try to leave it on, but we're definitely gonna have to disconnect it and also disconnect this sensor here. Um, that's pretty well it. Besides that, we're gonna, once we take the coil packs out, we're gonna take all the bolts out that are holding the valve cover on and we can remove that. So let's go ahead and get working. I might, my air box is loose. I didn't tighten it because I have the AEM one that's just poking out there, ready to go on. So I might just pop the air intake off because we're gonna have to, see down there, we have to get a 19 mil wrench on that so that we can turn over the engine um, so we get top dead center on each cylinders as we go. So anyways guys, let's dig into it. All right, so I wanna show you guys what we're gonna be looking at and why we're gonna be looking at it. So, um, for the most part, these engines on the exhaust side, the exhaust valves, they get tight. And what that means is the clearance um, on these rockers here, um, they actually, it kind of fades away um, and they tighten up. And what happens essentially is the exhaust valves are slightly open and it can lead to burnt exhaust valves. Who knows how, we don't really know the history on this engine. It looks okay under here, but it's not like new for sure. Um, but like I said, I don't know the whole history on this thing, but I just right off the bat. So let me show you guys this. Hopefully you can see this. So here is, um, on the cylinder, the fourth cylinder, you can see that the camshaft lobe is here. So what happens is the camshaft lobe spins around and it'll push down this and then it'll push the valves to open them. But what you're supposed to have is a little bit of clearance on these adjusters here. And if I go over here, you should be able to audibly hear the clearance since um, technically this isn't under load. The lobe is sitting over here. You hear that tiny little click? You can hear the clearance. This one is solid. There's no clearance. Like it's, it's completely um, solid. Again here, so you see the lobe is way up top. So we definitely know it's not pushing down. Let's see what we got here. No clearance. Yet this one has a little bit of, you can hear it, right? Hopefully you can hear that. This one, zero clearance. So that's essentially what we're gonna be going and doing um, on this thing. So we'll rotate it. So um, we'll work cylinder by cylinder, make sure that the valves aren't being opened. Right now this one, even though it's in a weird spot, it's not technically open and you can see here. Hopefully you can hear that a little bit of clearance. A little bit of clearance so this one's not too bad but some of these other ones are really tight so what we're gonna do i'm gonna move this air box out of the way might as well and then we can start rotating um everything and we'll we'll start getting these clearances in check and i'll show you how that's done so 
So you guys probably just saw, what I started off by doing was moving the 19 mil on the crank pulley and we're gonna line this aligning mark with here and it goes across the cover. So see that little guy there? That little guy there, line it up with the uh, head where the cover meets. And you're also gonna see this alignment tick there and this one right there, hopefully you can see it, there it is. So you wanna align all those. And then the first cylinder will be at top dead center and you can see the camshaft lobes are pointed up. But what you're gonna do is take your feeler gauge and in this case, um, on the intake valves, we're gonna go with about 11 thousandths of an inch clearance. And that should set it to about where you want. You want like between 10 and 11 thousandths on, I don't know, some people, it's kind of, I don't know, a bunch of people have different opinions on what you want uh, as far as what you want to achieve, whether you want them a little bit a little bit looser so that they have some room to tighten up or, or whatnot, but I'm gonna stick with 11 thousandths of an inch. There's kind of a range, people seem to say like 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch, and then a little bit tighter on the exhaust, uh, probably about 9 thousandths of an inch we're gonna do. Um, so I just did the intake on the first cylinder, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exhaust. So you can hear we have a tiny bit of a play, but I doubt we're gonna have the eight thousandths of an inch that we're looking for. So let me put the camera down and I'll show you that procedure. Okay, so we have our nine thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. And if we try to stick it in here, we'll instantly find out what we got. And yeah, this is tight. I can't get this in, let's see. This one I can almost get it in, but still not quite. So what we do, we take our tool, throw it over the 10 mil jam nut, and we're gonna loosen it. So once we loosen it, then we can turn it so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna get our screwdriver into the slot so we can turn the set screw. And once we got that, I can loosen it up so we can fit our feeler gauge in here. And then we're gonna to wanna to set it just so it has a slight drag. So right there seems pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll leave my feeler gauge in there. I won't turn the screwdriver and we will tighten this so that we're all set. And let's double check it. So it's got a nice slight drag on there and we are good to go. So let me just double check. It's tight. So we're good. And then we're gonna do the same with this side. So this is it, just a whole lot of finesse stuff. It really isn't that difficult, it's just a little bit time consuming, but really not that hard. So we'll get that there, get in our set screw. Again, this didn't fit in a minute ago. So we're gonna have to loosen this one so we can fit our feeler gauge in here. Still wants to be a bit looser. There we go, we got it in here. Tighten it, feel how much it sticks. Should be about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the screwdriver. Tighten it down. Double check it. And then we'll check with here. Still just have that slight drag. So we're all set. So we should be able to hear that light tapping noise. And they're actually a little bit looser than before, which is good. So we can, we've done the intake, we've done the exhaust. We can go ahead and turn the crankshaft 180 degrees. And then the third cylinder uh, will be in the same spot where the lobes are facing upwards. And we can do the same thing on that one. So I'll do one more and then I'll whip through the rest. All right, so you can now see that the lobes on the third cylinder are facing up here, facing up there. So we should be all set to check our valve clearances. This one has a tiny, tiny bit, but not much. This one's solid, like there is next to nothing there. Intake, you probably hear a little bit, a little bit. Usually it's exhaust sides that tighten up. So we'll go ahead, same procedure. We're gonna loosen them up with our feeler gauges and then we'll just keep ripping through this thing. It's really easy, you guys, honestly. As long as you're precise and uh, analytical about it, you can get it done pretty easily. It's not taking long at all. Yeah. 
All right, so let's turn the crankshaft 180 degrees. We'll do the next one, and then we'll do 180 degrees in the crankshaft again, and we'll do the last cylinder. So let's just fire right through it. So just like that, all the valves are now adjusted. Everything's tight, double-checked everything. And if you go around in that simple test, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty primitive, but you can hear them clank when the lobe is up. And that's what you're trying to achieve out of all of them. So that's a quick test that you can do. Make sure if the lobe is facing up, that you're getting that nice little tap and clank sound, which we are. So anyways, everything's adjusted. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the valve cover back on whip it all back together. It's really not that difficult. It's just the reverse. We're gonna put the valve cover back on, put our coil packs back in, um, put our hoses back on, um, put all the wiring back on, all the sensors, plug our coil packs in, and that's it, you guys. So let's just whip it back together. So everything's back together, everything's tight. It's a moment of truth. Let's go ahead and jump in and start this thing see if it still has the misfire issue. So it was misfiring when it was cold. It was ever so slightly. We'll let's see how she is now. Started in like me on that one. pretty good so far. Before I had a kind of a miss. Might be good. Fingers crossed. So the car is now warmed up and listen to it purr now you guys. It is just perfect. <laughs> I can't believe the valve adjustment does that much, but when you see how tight those valves are, it definitely makes sense. I'll stop talking for a second just so you guys can hear it. I mean, it's idling perfectly. The, before the RPM was going up and down a little bit, and even out of the exhaust, even though it's stock, you could hear it sputtering, which you don't hear whatsoever anymore. before when you come back here, you hear ba-da, 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 ba-da. And yeah, I'm super happy. So now I can go ahead, I just wanted to make sure the misfire was taken care of because not only did it have a misfire, but it was really laggy down low, like it was bogging pretty bad. So now I can go ahead, um, not today, but in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and change all the fluids. We're gonna change the oil, uh, change the diff fluid. Training fluid is okay for now. But, and at that same time, we'll put the intake on since everything seems to be A-OK. -okay. Put the intake on, engine oil, diff fluid, get this thing ready to, to get going here. Um, also gonna put on the rest of the lug nuts and get this thing off, but the reason why it's still in the wood, if you guys didn't see the last video, check out the last video where we lowered the car and put the wheels on, so we have coilovers on, we have the RPF ones on, but I have it sitting on wood. I got two uh, double stacked wood in the front and in the back, just so that I can keep it on the lift, because. I would take it off to show you guys, but I'm gonna go up and I just don't wanna deal with driving up and down on wood right now. So um, yeah, we'll get it on the ground. So I think I should be okay ride height wise, but I'll, I talked about that in the last video too, but let's wrap this video up. Right, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Uh, this was a successful mission. We ended up adjusting the valves. It fixed the misfire issue that we were having. So I am super pumped on that. Um, if you guys follow along for a little bit, we were changing some injectors and different things to try to fix it, but ended up just being a valve adjustment, which I'm happy about. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, check out the other videos on the channel. We have a lot and lot of content already on this S2000, even though it's a short period of time. We took it from falling off the lift, fully damaged to pretty decent looking car. You might not like the color, but at least it's a car and we're gonna go hit the track shortly. So check out the other videos, consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.